Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics. We're going to take a differential equation and show how the method of Frobenius works. I have chosen here for you the Legendre differential equation, which arises in the context of the Schrodinger equation when you solve the problem in quantum mechanics for the spherically symmetric potential. You get an equation that looks like this, where x is related to one of the angles, and he, I'm going to show you, needs to be expressed in the form of an L integer in this fashion as we analyze this problem. So the first step in the method of Frobenius is the series plug-in. We have the infinite series. We take the first derivative, brings down a k here, k minus 1, and the second derivative brings down a k minus 1 here, and we substitute these in to the differential equation. So here is the differential equation of Legendre. We have 1 minus x squared times the second derivative minus 2x times the first derivative plus p times y. Then we notice that this uh, x squared here that's by itself, we like it to be collected so that all the x's are in one place in each of the terms. So I have one of these minus x squared moving on in. When it hits the x to the k minus 2, you get x to the k as the exponents add and the 2's cancel. Then minus 2, x goes in here and kicks that x one power up to get x to the k and the last term simply written down. Step two, fix the exponents. We want these x's to have the same power of k so we can have the sum in sync with each other, each of the series. So we let m equals k minus 2, which is the same as saying k is m plus 2. And then uh, this first power series here, k equals 0, gets replaced with m equals minus 2 and infinity stays the same since infinity plus or minus 2 is infinity. Then k is m plus 2, and if you knock one off there, you get m plus 1. k is replaced with m plus 2, and k minus 2 is replaced by m. So there we have it with the m's, and here we notice that if m equals minus 2, you get 0, m equals minus 1, you get 0, so we can just as well start the m with 0. Then we notice that the m is a summation variable. It can be anything. It could be n. It could be j. So we simply forget this definition back there and redefine k so that k equals m. And then we simply write the summation with the k's in there, and now we have our equation that has x to the k in all places, and the price we pay is that here a sub k plus 2, these have been adjusted you know, over here to accommodate this, but we want that because we want to be able to get the uh, coefficients here in terms of some previous coefficients. This is a nice, nice thing. Step 3, the arbitrary trick. Now we can factor out the x to the k, and for this to work for all values of x, all the infinite values of x that could be chosen, this has to vanish term by term. So x arbitrary means that has to vanish term by term. I simply recopied what's inside the bracket here and set it equal to 0. And this means, in terms of the a sub k, we have the coefficient k plus 2 in terms of 2 back coefficient, just 2 back, all right, which would be simply plus this term here, plus that term there, minus this term there. Then I notice that the k times the quantity k minus 1 plus the 2k here is equal to k squared minus k plus 2k gives us k squared plus k, which is k times the quantity k plus 1. So I simply replace this part with k times the quantity k plus 1, and that simplifies there a little bit for us. Step 4, the recursion relation. So now we simply divide to get a sub k plus 2 on one side of the equation, and that gives us something in terms of 2 of the coefficients back. So in other words, a sub k here is 2 back, and that is a nice, that's called a recursion relationship because it nicely gives us something in terms of the previous 
previous information. So we can build up. Now you see here why P should be L times the quantity L plus 1 where L is some integer. The reason is that we do not want to have our series go forever. If our series goes forever, then we get a blow up effect in quantum mechanics. That's not good. And so the quantum mechanics, you know, the physics would tell us here that P needs to be equal to something so that when I reach some K maximum, I get killed off. Well, that'll happen if P is some L times the quantity L plus 1. So in other words, looking just like this, then when K reaches L, the game is over and the series terminates. So this can be looked at from two perspectives. Uh, one is the mathematician pers perspective. The mathematician here is Legendre. And that is to do this kind of a definition so you get cute polynomials and you can investigate them. Well, uh, Schrodinger, the physicist here, is interested in this kind of uh, a thing here for another reason, and that is in physics you can't have a wave function that blows up, so you do not want to have an infinite power series, you want to terminate the power series, and you terminate the power series with the same condition here, L times L plus 1, that quantity equals P. So it's a neat way to see why you have to have P replaced by that L configuration from the point of view of mathematics to get nice polynomials and from the point of view of physics which is necessary from the probability distribution needing to always be finite. So in quantum mechanics when you study this you will find that this is related to the angular momentum squared that operator and it quantizes the angular momentum. And here's a little vector model that you see in modern physics books where they draw that L and it has this uh, length if you take the square root of this. And the M uh, values, the projection along the Z axis, uh, you find to be 0, H bar, 2 H bar, like the Bohr uh, idea of quantization. But here you can have it down or up. And this is very important in chemistry. I just mentioned this to touch on it for you to be on a lookout when you look at uh, this from other courses. Uh, but we are just happy enough to just solve the Legendre differential equation to get that recursion relation. And in the next section, I'll show you how to calculate the Legendre polynomials.